Hi everyone, Harry here to talk about Mark Meadows' latest gambit to elude uh, trial in state court in the Arizona case. Uh, the Arizona case is a false electors case. Uh, it's the one in which Jenna Ellis has just agreed to cooperate against the federal defendants, which include Meadows, but also Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman and Boris Epstein. The crime involves a plan to get phony state electors, members of the Republican Party, to say they're the real electors. Also to try to lobby the legislature to change. Also eventually to try to push on even Mike Pence. But uh, this is the one that there's, you know, it's now, it was a little late to market, but it's moving uh, somewhat quickly, especially there's been a guilty plea already from one of the state legislators. Okay, so here's Meadows, and he's doing what he did in Georgia, which is trying to remove uh, the case. And to remind you about removal, it's a little bit of kissing cousin to immunity, but it's importantly different. Immunity that Trump is pressing in and, and got the uh, great opinion for him from the Supreme Court is basically a right not to stand trial in the first place. It's as if it's just written out of history. Removal, by contrast, is a right to have your state law case, in this case criminal law case, transferred to federal court where there are different uh, advantages, but one in particular, which I'll, I'll get into um, shortly. The idea behind removal, it's a little bit of an antiquated idea, but it's still on the books, is, and it comes from a time when state-federal tensions were really kind of a very deep integral feature of American uh, politics. And the worry is that a state court to try to get at federal policy and federal function would indict a federal official for really just doing his or her job. And that's that really just doing his or her job is what gives rise to the basic test for removal. So you need to show that you were your federal official and you were acting in your official capacity under color of law. So that official capacity has a little bit of the flavor of the immunity um, standard, but it's different. It, there, first of all, the immunity standard uh, is a total pass for being tried at all. But also the immunity standard is, a, you know, you, you have to be within the outer perimeter of your official liability. And this is for a president. Here, for a federal official, you, you're basically acting under color of law, doing what federal officials do, and that gives you a right to be tried in federal court, not state court. Now, Meadows' claim has been pretty much from the start, that is who he is and what he was doing. I'm the chief of staff. I need to keep the president informed of everything happening, even uh, implicitly, uh, criminal uh, conspiracies involving members of Congress and the like. He presents himself as basically just a switchboard, taking calls, passing them along, and uh, just staying in the loop. That's the uh, same kind of stance thematically that he took in Georgia, and it didn't fly for a number of reasons, uh, but basically it was the, the Fulton County prosecutor was able to show, no, 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 this is not just doing chief of staffy things. There's nothing that's part of the official description of the job duties of the chief of staff to try to lobby states to change votes or to try to lobby or even be uh, sort of a support for efforts by by Republican officials to masquerade as phony state electors, uh, saying as they did here, I'm I'm the elector for the winner of the election, Donald Trump. When of course they were neither the elector, and Trump had not won the election. So the the basic argument that prevailed against Meadows and 
defeated his removal motion in Georgia was the stuff that he's charged with doing really doesn't come under the um, rubric of official conduct by a chief of staff. Now, in Arizona, he's running the same arguments with um, the same very fine lawyer, George Terwilliger, former deputy attorney general. There's, on the one hand, you know, there's not the equivalent of the trip he took to Georgia uh, for Arizona, but there's a lot of communication with Arizona state uh, legislators and really trying to, you know, promote and at least stay informed about the criminal scheme. So here's um, one where there's a text by an Arizona congressional representative uh, saying, you know, we're going to try to encourage a locked door meeting by state legislatures. They close the door, lock it, and come out as the Trump representatives. Meadow responds, Meadows responds, I love it. That I love it uh, actually figured in the January Six committee, and you know, it shows Meadows being an enthusiastic participant. Now, is that enough? So, Meadows can still run the argument, okay? Yeah, I said I love it, but that's you know, I'm doing, I'm saying what I think President Trump would want me to say. I'm just a you know, serving the role of his eyes and ears and and the like. And the argument on the other side will go, and what we will see now, we, what we've received is Meadows' motion to remove, and that's going to prompt a um, response from the Arizona Attorney General, Carrie Lake, to say, no, 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 this conduct here. Uh, is not just eyes and ears, or if it is, it's eyes and ears on a landscape that is not part of what um, Trump, who's unindicted co-conspirator number one in this indictment, uh, is supposed to be uh, doing, and in any event, not really what a chief of staff is supposed to be doing. You can't um, just sort of say, as long as you're being the, a conduit for the, the president, that's your official duty. But there's, you know, it's a judgment call because at a minimum, there are a lot of acts in the indictment and many of them do seem more kind of innocuous and pedestrian, just uh, takes a call, uh, texts back, you know, got it, really just, just, uh, checking boxes rather than being a participant. Moreover, the test for removal is supposed to be pretty low. It's supposed to be pretty easy for federal officials to get into um, federal court by showing uh, that they did official acts, or another way to put it is they have a federal defense. And that brings me to the final point to explain why Meadows wants to be there. There's a, a lot of reasons he would want, including being uh, decoupled from the not very, uh, you know, impressive group of Boris Epstein and John Eastman and especially Rudy Giuliani. He does not want to be, no no defendant would want to be attached to the uh, hip with, with, with to such a motley uh, group. But he wants to raise a supremacy clause defense, which is similar to removal, but it's not the same thing. So he wants to get it removed to federal um, court and then say, I was pursuing federal policy, doing what I was supposed to do as a federal official, and therefore for the state to hold me criminally liable would actually run afoul of the supremacy clause that says federal law and function are supreme and can't be interfered with by the state. So the petition to remove is the first part of a two-step where he wants to be able to dismiss the whole thing on a supremacy clause defense. It's, it's possible one could be removed to federal court, still lose the federal defense, and then you're just in court on the state law charges, uh, but in federal court, and even so, that would be a, an advantage for Meadows because just the, the level of judges in practice, but also not being, uh, you know, one among the motley crew of Arizona defendants, of which there are still, I think, 17. I think we'll see a lot of pleas 
But uh, nevertheless, there's the real possibility of Boris Epstein, John Eastman, and Rudy Giuliani in all his glory being in trial there. And that, that's a group you want to distinguish yourselves from. So that's the fight. It's a reprise of what happened in Georgia, but another judge could decide differently. And it's in some ways not as strong, a stronger case for removal because of the absence of that one really, like what chief of staff is supposed to go down to Georgia and lobby state legislators. That seems especially far afield and we don't have that here. So we'll see how that plays out. The AG will will um, respond, and then then we will um, see whether Meadows winds up in federal court, which would be a boon for him uh, in what is shaping up as a very as the latest, but a serious risk on the horizon of a potential sentence in Arizona state court. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.